Welcome back to another Daily Recap. Today is Wednesday, November 27, 2024, the day before Thanksgiving. So I've got a number of levels on the board today. As you can see, it's before 8 a.m. Eastern. There are a few data releases happening today, the most significant being a GDP. I think that's at 8, uh, 8.30 a.m. And then also a core personal consumption expenditures price index at 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock is during the open session, something to be aware of. Now, I have a number of levels on the board, more than I usually would have. They're kind of close together, considering where they've been and the ranges we've had lately. But typically a day before a holiday like today will be slow. So I'm kind of banking on that. If the market is moving fast and prices going all over the place, which not likely, but it can happen, then these levels are probably off the table. But if it just kind of meanders around and goes slow, then these are important levels that could provide reactions and a base hit. Again, I will not be trading anything today. I may just keep an eye on things and record it just so I have something to look at in tonight's video. But nonetheless, here are the levels. There's a zone between 602.06 and 602.50, and there are numbers above and below where we have. This is a relatively small range considering how much they've traveled in the last few weeks. But we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell and analyze whatever happened. Catch you on the other side. So where were the trades today? If you were willing to put money at risk, Today, the real trade was going short early in the morning. That much is obvious now, but how would you have known that the SPY would come down or could come down all morning? The hint was in the three-hour chart that we looked at last night. This breakdown candle, this red candle that I'm pointing at, was the start of a certain type of bearish consolidation. It became apparent as price climbed up this breakdown candle on this three-hour chart toward the top, I have a line at 600.86, $0.686. Cents. That's the top of that breakdown candle. So what you'd want to do to play this kind of trade is to plan to get in a short position toward the top of this breakdown candle. Part of the ingredients of this type of consolidation is time. How long is it taking price to climb back up? At a certain point in time, the odds are increased that price will get pushed down once it gets toward the top part of this whole consolidation pattern. And generally, price will fall from there, and the goal is to ride that short position down to a target below the low of that initial breakup candle that started the whole thing. So like down here somewhere or below. As you can see, because we're on a three-hour chart or 180-minute chart, this kind of trade needs time to develop. And if you get a candle close above the high, above 600.86, one candle, definitely two candles, then this bearish pattern is broken and price probably won't fall. So that would be your signal to bail out of the trade. For today, though, I was expecting the market to be slow. I figured volume would be low, and it was. So while this whole pattern was legitimate and going short and holding out for a bigger move was certainly viable, it's not what the base hit futures trading strategy is all about on this channel. I cover these longer-term kind of swing trade setups in the trading course, by the way, but the focus here is how would you have traded the levels on the board from this morning for counter-trend trades on the way down. First, I like to add the five cent buffer to all levels toward price when I know where price is going to be at the open, or more specifically, where price is going to be at the close of that first 15 minute candle. That's my self imposed start of the trading day. None of these upper levels matter today because price went down, not up, but I'll adjust all the levels from here down and bring the levels up toward price five cents. Now these levels are set to trigger trades in the E-minis, depending on how price over in the SPY approaches the levels. The first trade would have been a long trade at 640 cents, but price came up within pennies and bounced away enough for a four point base hit. So that is a near miss and you would cancel your order activation at that level. The next trade was a long trade at 599.62, looking for a minimum base hit of four points, but price got within a couple ticks of your profit target before coming back down to your entry point a few minutes later. That's a near miss of your base hit profit target and you jump out of the trade at your break even point for a wash. The next trade was another long trade at 598.80 and price came down in the way that you want price to come into these levels deliberately. You don't want price to come in and kind of a lazy or like tease the level for a while before they actually hit it. That's usually a sign they're not going to react the right way if and when they do hit the level. But here in this trade, it was a solid base hit of four or more ES points. Normally, I'd consider a recycle trade back up at the underside of the level at 599.52. That would be the operating level with the five cent adjustment this time down toward price, but you'd want to see more time go by before attempting a recycle trade. This one did work, but we're not counting it as a playing by the rules trade because there wasn't enough time between the time they got out of that level and they got back up into it from the other side. 
The next level down at 598.15 was interesting. Price behaved at this level almost exactly as it did at a previous level. I think this week or last week, you may remember seeing this kind of thing happen before where there's a consolidation where price gets within 20 cents of your operating level and either goes sideways or test that 20 cent threshold a few times. This kind of price action is giving you a clue that the level might not hold. Price might not bounce if the level gets hit. So the rule is to not enter the trade at the level, at least not for a counter trend bounce like most of the trades that we do here. And sure enough, they did not react there for a base hit, not enough at least. So not going long at that level would have made things a little easier for you. But I'll point out that even if you had bought contracts at 598.15, you would have needed to buy again down at the next level, and that combined position would have given you a nice base hit. But we're not going to count the 598.15 level because trading it would have violated that consolidation rule. The level down at 597.43 was the money trade for the day. At least a four-point base hit, possibly more. Looking at the big picture, there were some clues that this was going to be a longer term bounce, but for the purposes of our playing by the rules trades, we're just going to count this as a four point base hit. And if you're keeping track, there have been two official base hits so far. Now you have another chance at a recycled trade for a short trade at 598.75. That's the operating level after bringing it down five cents toward price. So getting into that trade was fine by the book. It would have pulled you in without the trade getting out of the money more than a tick or two, but look what they did. They almost gave you four points. They came within one penny. The low there was 598.36. They almost gave four points before climbing back up to the entry point. So what do you do? You would normally jump out if price comes back to your entry point pretty fast, like within three minutes. If they take their time, this whole thing could turn into a bigger consolidation that will eventually go lower, and they did go lower, and the trade would have given you four points or more if you stayed in it. But if it were me, I would have considered the first attempt at around 3.31 p.m., when they hit it the first time or tried to hit it the first time, and that would be the trade. And when they got back up to the entry point, I would have jumped out at break even. That's according to the rules, at least. And I'll point out that they hit the level at 598.15 one more time and provided a nice bounce, but we can't count this trade because the level was hit within 30 minutes of the closing bell, and that violates another rule. So all in all, these levels would have given you some opportunities if you were diligent in managing them. I had no interest in trading today, so I have nothing to show you. I did record the first two, two and a half hours or so of price coming down through these levels and reacting at them in their various ways, but I was hands off, no trades for me. So it doesn't really make sense for me to play that recording because there's nothing to see other than just a replay of the morning. On the daily chart, there's nothing obvious that jumps out at me in terms of what next week might bring. Overall, they're bullish and they're still fighting 600. We're near the end of the week in terms of what this weekly chart is going to look like. Since the market is closed tomorrow, and there will be a partial trading day on Friday, I don't expect this weekly candle to change a whole lot. Maybe strange things will happen on Friday, who knows, but we'll need some type of signal on this weekly chart before we can start talking about a reversal. Same thing on this monthly chart. One more partial day of trading on this month, and then this big green up candle for this whole month of November will close, and I suspect it will look similar to what it looks like now. So then if crazy things happen in the SPY during the month of December, and the next monthly candle on this chart gives us a signal of some kind that they might be topping out, Well, the timing would be perfect if that happens. If it does happen, we probably won't see anything big happen until January or February, but this is all speculation. I mean, the SPY is clearly very bullish still, but in terms of cyclical timing, the market may get a reset, some kind of pullback, but not until we start seeing signals. And they'll actually start on much shorter time frames first. I just like to look at this monthly chart when a run has gone on for a certain amount of time, and then I'll start asking myself, okay, where is the top? They'll find the top soon, probably in December is what I'm thinking. But anyway, this has very little to do with the intraday precise scalp trades that we pull out every day using our daily levels. And that's what I'm going to continue to do each day because it's relatively easy to predict short-term moves and my process works to pull points out of the market on most days. On the tracking logs, you can see what the play in by the rules log looks like, the two base hits, and then you can read the notes and I just explain how everything played out based on the rules. And then the Sam's trades log, there was no trades. I took no trades today. And I'm going to go, I know we have one more partial day of this week and this month, but I'm going to go ahead and start filtering out some different timeframes so we can see where we've landed so far this year and so far in this month. Here is the playing by the rules log filtered out just for the year 2024, 172% annual return so far this year. You can see the daily averages, the average per hour, profit and loss metrics, everything else. 206 days traded so far this year. 
And then my trades, the SAMS trades, filtered out just for 2024. You might not know this, but I'll point out that starting in March of 2024, I started keeping a separate log called SAMS trades log so I can track my own trades, which are generally a little more creative, more points, trail positions. In other words, I'm not just going for a base hit of every single level. You also notice there's less trade days, 183 days traded so far this year. And you can see the profit and loss metrics and the total rate of return, 245% so far. Back on the playing by the rules log, this is the month of November so far and where it stacks up. And here is Sam's trades on the month of November as well. So that's a wrap for today. The market's closed tomorrow for the Thanksgiving holiday. I'll run the numbers for Friday morning. I do not plan to trade. And I'll be back Monday, of course, and we'll pick it up from there. And if you're in the United States and you celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you have a good holiday. See you in the next recap video. Have a great day.